Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. This week, I thought that we could talk a little bit about the miracle of Jesus walking on water. Uh, it's really one of the most amazing and interesting miracles that he demonstrated to his disciples. Sometimes you'll hear in the 21st century people using the term walking on water. And what they mean is that someone has done some superhuman feat, like jumped really far in the Olympics or, um, you know, swam really fast or did something extremely unusual for a human being. Sometimes walking on water means that someone is describing something that seems almost impossible. And it's also used to describe a person who is very capable. Boy, that person is so smart, they could walk on water. But what we're talking about today is the miraculous act performed by Jesus of literally walking on water. Now, as human beings, we can't do that. When we go to the water and we jump in, we either sink or we begin to swim. But Jesus was literally able to walk on top of the water. Why did Jesus choose to go to the disciples in this way? Let's look at the story from Matthew 14. Feel free to read along with me. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. They were really freaked out. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. There are some key words that I want us to focus on today. Take courage. It is I, said Jesus. Don't be afraid, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So let's take a look at these five phrases that Jesus spoke to his disciples. The first, take courage. Find a way to resist being fearful. So what does that look like for us? Oh, it could be finding something in the grass and being afraid to step over it, uh, touching a frog. Um, what else could we be afraid of? Speaking up for ourselves when we need to defend ourselves, things like that. So in trying to resist being fearful, we can do a few things. First, take a few minutes or seconds to Think instead of immediately react. That can really help your emotions. Be aware 
of our tendency to overreact to things that we don't instantly understand. Sometimes we think the worst when really we don't need to. And you can always ask somebody that you know um, and trust to help you figure out a situation or what you might want to say. It is I. Find a way to look for Jesus in your everyday life. Remember the Bible stories that we've talked about and miracles, including this one, that we know about Jesus from the Bible? Know that Jesus is with us every day, all day, and so expect him to show up in your thinking. Expect to use his teachings as you find yourself in situations with family and friends at home or at school. So, if we get angry at a brother or sister for something, maybe we need to think about how Jesus would want us to behave. If we have done something that we shouldn't have, we need to fess up. So it's using the things that we know about how God wants us to behave and remembering those in our daily activities. Don't be afraid. I think that Jesus is saying, decide to trust and not to worry. Choose bravery. Believe that you have skills to manage what you're asked to do and how to respond. The teacher asks you to get up in front of the class and read a poem. You might be afraid in the beginning, but it might be okay. And you never know until you try. And trust Jesus to help you get through any difficult situation. You of little faith. We need to recognize that our human tendency is to lack faith or forget that we can rely on God. So we can decide that God's power is so much bigger than we can imagine, and we can be excited about that. We can learn to trust what we know about God to help guide our emotions, and we can hang in. We can be watchful, and we will develop faith. Answers to our problems come to us in different ways. Jesus Ask Peter, why did you doubt? Jesus recognizes our human tendency to doubt, and he wants us to work on doubting less and being more confident. How can we develop confidence? We can read Bible stories about people who didn't doubt God's word, like Noah in the building of the ship, uh, or the ark, Moses in leading the people out of Egypt, David in fighting Goliath, and Mary in being told and believing that she would bear the Son of God. And we can learn from the journeys that they took. We can ask Jesus to help us to have less doubt and to believe in ourselves as we choose to Follow him, which helps us build confidence. We can choose to think differently. Remember the last time you made good decisions to work through a problem and how that felt? That can help us doubt less and be more confident. So choices. It's what we do. We make choices every day. I think in this passage, some of the takeaway messages could be that Jesus wants us to choose courage, to believe in his miracles, to be brave as we go through our day, to rely on our faith and have confidence in God's word. We can do this, guys. Take care.
Have a good week. Bye.